This is Timothy Purcell again with my Math 1325 class. We're going to do another application problem using uh, the first derivative test. This is one that some of y'all can relate to. The function a of x equals 0.004x cubed minus 0.05x squared plus 0.16x plus 0 0.02 approximates the blood alcohol concentration of a person's bloodstream x hours after drinking 8 ounces of a hard liquor. The function only applies to the interval from 0 to 6. On what time intervals is the blood alcohol concentration increasing? On what uh, intervals is it decreasing? Well, just knowing how the human body works, assuming this is a person that's drinking the, uh, yes it is, it's a, it says a person's bloodstream. I know that when you drink the alcohol, it goes into your stomach, and then it starts being absorbed into the blood system. And so right after you drink it, the amount of alcohol in your bloodstream starts to increase. But then that liver kicks in. Your liver kicks in and starts filtering out that uh, alcohol. So the amount of uh, just from being alive as long as I've been alive and knowing how my liver works, I know that the blood alcohol concentration would increase but eventually that liver's filtering it out. It's gonna get all the stuff that I drank into my bloodstream eventually. It's not gonna stay there in my stomach. It's gonna be all absorbed. The alcohol concentration, once the liver kicks in, it's gonna start decreasing. So I'm fairly confident. And I'm fairly confident that over the, what is it, a six hour time span, if I had to, if I just had to guess, I would say it's gonna increase and then decrease. Make sense? You don't wind it, it doesn't start decreasing and then somewhere along the way change and start back increasing. If you drink, think of it as you drink it all at one time. I know that's a big shot, eight ounces of a hard liquor, but so that'd be a mighty big shot, but basically that's how I'm thinking of it. Do y'all under, do you understand the problem? Okay, so here's our function. Let's find the derivative. There, finding the derivative a prime three times point zero zero four that's a point zero one two x squared minus point zero five times two that's a point one x plus point one six and the derivative of that point zero two is zero we want to know when is this uh, derivative equal to zero? When is it undefined? Well, it's always defined. And you know something, before I forget it, I better remember. We're only concerned about uh, the time span from zero to six. So we're only concerned about six hours after the person drank that hard liquor, up to six hours. We're not concerned with six hours after. We're concerned with only up to six hours. So we set the derivative equal to zero. And we're going to have to uh, use the quadratic formula. And in the past, I've worked with the decimal numbers, okay? This, uh, in the past, when I've solved a problem like this, uh, A equals 0 0.012, B is equal to a negative 0.1, and C is equal to a positive 0.16 using the quadratic formula. But that really got messy uh, this morning, and so I decided, okay, let's uh, instead, let's eliminate those decimals. I need to move them all, what? I, I need to move this three places to change that point zero one two to just a 12, so I'm going to multiply through by 1,000. Remember, multiplying by 1,000 moves the decimal point three places to the right, and multiplying through by 1,000, that gives us a zero equals a point zero one two x squared, that's just a 12x squared, minus, what's this point one times 1,000, what's that gonna give us? So a minus 100x plus there, Okay, so we're moving it three places. One, two, I agree with the 160. And 
There's a common factor. Those numbers are all divisible by uh, 2. Looks like they're divisible by 4. I guess we could shrink those down by uh, getting rid of the common factor of 4 if we wanted to. But just because I have a common factor, does that mean your problem's going to have a common factor? No. No, so uh, we're going to uh, use a calculator anyway. I think I'm just going to use 12, negative 100, and 160 because when you're doing a similar problem, odds favor you won't have a common factor you can get rid, rid of anyway. So A is 12, B is negative 100, and C is a positive 160. Do you recall the quadratic formula? Yes. Should I write it down? I'll write it down. I'll write negative B plus or minus. Andrew was shaking his head. No, I didn't need to write it down to remind y'all, but I'll go ahead. <laughs> so... See... My 1325 online, when they watch these videos, if they watch them, if they do, they're going to see the colorful repartee that they're missing by not taking it face to face. So, negative B, what's that going to give me? Positive 100. Plus or minus the square root of B squared, that's a negative 100 squared, minus 4 times A times C all over, what's my denominator? 2 times 12, which is 24. I'm going to work underneath that radical. I'm just going to work underneath the radical for the time being. And okay, so minus times Mm -hmm. 100, ah, I, I said minus 412, not 4 times 12. So let me do that again. What are y'all getting under that radical? 2320, so we have... We have 100... Plus or minus the square root of 2320 all over 24. And at this point, I'm going to split it up into two possibilities. We have the 100 plus the square root of 2320 all over 24. And I'll get a decimal value for that in a moment. We also have 100 minus the square root of 2320 all divided by 24. A hundred plus the square root of 2320 divided by 24. Now, let's see, can y'all see that? The funny thing is when there's a bad glare like that, uh, on the projector monitor, it's actually quite visible in the video. That uh, glare is created by the bright lights in the ceiling projector, not the document camera. So can y'all see that? What are you getting? 6.17. Oh, and by the way, how do they want us to round? Let's look back to the original problem. Here it is, round to the nearest hundred. So we're rounding to two decimal places. So... That's what, a 6.17? What's wrong there? What's wrong with 6.17? It, okay, it's over 6. It's not It's uh, not in the interval from 0 to 6. So we discard that one. Not in the interval from 0 to 6. Why? Uh, now, if it turns out that this one's not in that interval either, it's possible, maybe, 
your body absorbs the alcohol slowly. Maybe this person's uh, uh, liver doesn't work the way that uh, it should. That the alcohol concentration just keeps it uh, increasing. So I don't think I could increase over six hours, but you never know. Actually, I do. And what are y'all getting? I'm getting a two point. Can I see that? Where is it? Two point one six. Two point one six. Now nah, there it is. Is that number okay? Yeah, that's that critical number is fine. So what do we do next? Draw your number line. And you're only looking from 0 to 6. There's 2.16. What's the smallest? Uh, now I'm going to test a number to the left of 2.16. What do y'all think I'll test? 0 is the smallest number I could test in terms of the uh, uh, being sensible. Plugging it into A prime. Remember A prime. There, is that, there it is. Remembering A prime, we'd have a 0 minus 0 plus a 0.16. So positive, so increasing. So far it's uh, doing what I was expecting, knowing how the uh, body's liver works, the human body's liver works. I'd said it would increase and then start decreasing. So I think I'm going to be right here to the right of 2.16. I guess we could test a, we could test a 6. I think I'll test a 5. I'll test a 5. Plugging it into a prime, we're going to get a negative result. And I'll let y'all plug that into your calculator and verify it. So that means it's negative, so decreasing. And now we're ready to answer the question. So we want to know, mm, let's see there, we want to know the time interval on which the function is uh, increasing, the blood alcohol concentration is increasing, that's from 0, comma, to 2.16. Remember, in this course, in this course, we're stating our increasing and decreasing intervals as open intervals. And by that, I mean the parentheses. It's decreasing. The blood alcohol concentration is decreasing from 2.16 to 6. 2.16 comma 6. Any questions there? In the past when I've worked problems like this and I had to find critical numbers and the coefficients are decimals, I just worked with the decimal. But this morning, for some reason, Amy came in and had a question with her number nine, and I said, okay, here's where I work my problem using decimals, and then I reworked it using uh, integers, and I got the same thing in both cases, but it's just cleaner by getting rid of those decimals. It's just cleaner, in my opinion. Any questions there? Okay. And okay. This is the last one I wanted to do, so.